Hi everybody, today we're going to continue our lesson on semantic mapping software. We're going to be using this program right here called bubble.us. So everybody go to this website and what you're going to do is you're going to sign in or register and you can do that right with your Gmail account at Ashland. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to sign in, I'm going to use my personal email and here we go. So now we are logged in. I'm going to create a new mind map and today for your assignment you're going to be looking at the benefits of mind mapping and different ways you can keep students on board uh, using mind mapping in your classroom. Once you get into your mind map you're going to notice you're just going to have a real simple start page it's just going to say start here. So the first thing we want to do we're going to go in and we're going to change this to semantic mapping benefits. Boom. Now you're going to notice different options pop up if you would like to change the bubble color itself, you can select here. Oh, excuse me, I have it on text color right now. You can go ahead and select text color and you can change the different colors of the font. If you want to change the bubble itself, so maybe you want to have different colors match up with different themes, you can go ahead and do that as well. And you'll notice the bubble will change automatically. If you want just transparent and make it white, you can go ahead and do that there. It's nice to have a little bit of color. So we'll go ahead and we'll leave it We'll leave it on the yellow, that's fine. Text, I'm gonna change this back to black. Now down here, you're gonna notice there are also some font options. You can make the bold, italicized, alignment, and different sizes. So you can make it a little bit smaller, you can make it larger. This might be a heading title, for instance. Whatever it is that you wanna do, that's up to you, however you wanna design it. Here is the hyperlink. So if you had a website that you wanted students to be able to go to, you would just simply copy the URL, highlight the text, and then plug in your hyperlink here. Here is an attachment for files, and here also gives you a layout for uh, the different type of templates that they provide for you, circle, trees, and grids. You click on the arrow, you can see the different items that pop up. Pretty cool, saves you time for sure. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create four bubbles so that we can create our semantic map. So the first one we want to create, we're going to add a bubble here to the right. And we're going to call this structure. Now notice it's not connected. So when I go back here and hit that button, it's now connected. I hold my cursor on top of the bubble, I can move it around. Pretty nice. From here, we're going to continue to build our semantic map. So now what I want to do, I'm going to make sure I'm going to go next time. Instead of this time, what I'm going to do, instead of having it set up where I manually put in the connection, I'm going to make this a grid, and I'm going to add a bubble underneath. So here I'm going to put in my second category, which is feedback. Now you'll notice the options up here. If I click on that T, it will take away the formatting option for text, right? If I click on it again, here they are. So if I want to make this bold, for instance, and I want to increase the size I can go ahead and do that I'm gonna leave the bubble as it is in terms of uh, color that's fine for right now so you're gonna notice automatically because I selected it as a grid here it is connected and same thing if I take this and move it around you'll notice it stays with it that's up to you how you want to do it how you want to put it I'll leave that up to you so now we have two of our items I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna select we have two more specific things we want to include on our semantic mapping. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in exam alignment. And notice it kept the same formatting for me because it's considered one grid, which is pretty cool. Makes life a little bit easier for sure. Move this over a little bit over here. And we have one more that we are looking to do, which is learning styles and study habits. Definitely. And same thing. We just hold and hover and we can move it over to this way. I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to change this and make it so that it is the, whoop, make it so that it is the same as the rest of the, there we go. It's close enough. <laughs> so, you get the idea for the purpose of the exercise. Now in here, what you're going to do, once you click on these, you're going to notice there's other tabs. So you can simply select tab, 
or select the down option. They are automatically connected. It's pretty nice. So you can go in head in here and play around with that. Now notice what I said earlier about hyperlinking. So what I want to do for this instance, because we're having students create a semantic map, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hyperlink into this the specific document that I want students to be able to access information from. That way, they're all consistent. So I've highlighted a document, which actually I'll go ahead and drag it over here so you can see it. Here's the document that we're going to be using in class. This is from Faculty Focus. This is just benefits to keeping students engaged using concept maps. I'm going to hyperlink or copy that hyperlink. Come in here and I'm going to insert this hyperlink. Now we're good to go. It's right there. When I click on it, it takes me directly to that web page. So it's real nice to provide your students with a specific resource that they can use or that you want them to use. It saves you time, it saves you energy, and that way you can make sure that your students are all reading and collecting information from the same exact source. A couple other items I wanted to show you just to make life a little bit easier. So for instance, you notice now uh, all the bubbles are the same color. Maybe I want to change these. So if I want to change the individual one, as I mentioned earlier, we can go ahead and we can do that. Make sure we have bubble color selected and I'm going to change this to like a red. That's fine. All right, and we'll go in and we'll change the cut text color to black. So now we have one, just, and then you just click on the side and that'll get rid of it. So now we have one that is a little bit different than the others. So how can I get the text and everything to be all the same, even though maybe I made a mistake and didn't do that. So you go up here to selection tool, select all, and now what's nice is these same options appear as if you were working on an individual bubble. So when I go to formatting, I go back to bubble color, and I want them all to be the same exact color. I click on that, and here we go. Now look, everything is exactly the same. Same thing, if I want to italicize, I can do that. It's up to you however you want to design this. And to get rid of those these bubbles, you'll notice they around these, these kind of dotted bubbles that are the selection keys. You go back to selection, and you just simply select deselect all, and you're good to go. Now, when you have your students start entering information to the specific bubbles, Again, there are multiple ways you can do that. Go to the blank space here. You can double click and that'll open up a bubble for you. Or as I talked about earlier, you can hit tab and that will create them automatically for you. Now, one thing that's important, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. You might wanna consider using different colored bubbles depending on how you want it organized. So for instance, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna change this one to kind of like a yellow and this will be my reasoning. So I'm just gonna put in number one and then XYZ reason. Now notice it doesn't automatically connect when you uh, do it this way, right? It doesn't automatically do that. So one thing you're going to have to make sure you do if you want it to be connected, you just click on the bubble, find the arrow, and connect it to your specific item. Boom. You're good to go. Now notice structure is automatically connected to reason one. And if you click on the arrow itself, you can determine what type of label you want. Do you want it to be a dashed line, line color, normal, whatever it is that you want. Again, purely up to you. You might not even put a requirement on this for your students to do so. But it's a really nice option to have. The different colors are especially beneficial because it breaks up the information into smaller pieces and keeps it more organized by different themes and things of that nature. So now that we have our map pretty much ready to go, now we need to export so that our students can use it. And there are various ways in which we can do this for our students. So we wanna select all option. So now we have everything ready. And we're gonna go here to the download option. Now there's different ways you can do this. So for instance, if you want to use this as a handout that you want to just give to students, maybe you're providing them with the information. A great way to do this is save as HTML outline. I would recommend when you do this, it's going to automatically come up in default as show bubble colors. I would automatically, I'm sorry, I would, I would recommend that you make that a hide because otherwise what's going to happen is when you print it, say for instance you print this and you want to give it to your students, that color of the bubble is going to come through and it may, be, may make the text very difficult to read. So I'll go to hide and then I'll, I'll download this here and this will give you an example of what that would look like. So it just gives you a nice little feedback you can see structure and then here go your bullet points for structure 
and they all go tied together. Another option which you can do, which is very nice, save as a JPEG or PNG. We're going to go ahead and save as a JPEG. And again, you can see this here. I would recommend, just like I said, if you're going to be saving it as a JPEG, as something that your students aren't going to be working on, you're just creating it for them, that you give them this, but you remove or get rid of the uh, bubble colors because it's just going to make it more difficult for you when you do so. You can see you can print, you can go full screen, presentation mode. If this is what you're doing in classes, like a lecture, for instance, hit escape, it'll take you out of that. So those are different ways to export your file as well. So hopefully this gives you some idea of how to use bubble.us and semantic mapping in general. So for today, I'm going to give you time now to work on this semantic mapping benefits article I mentioned. And I want you to create and plug in your own details and your own map based upon that article.